Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and a very warm welcome to the Gulf Oil Q3 FY22 earnings conference call hosted by Yes Securities. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchdown phone. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Nitin Tiwari from Yes Securities. Thank you, and over to you, Nitin. <coughs> Thanks, Ali. Uh, good day, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Yes Security, I welcome everyone to Gulf Oil Lubricant India Limited's third quarter FY22 earnings call. We have the pleasure of having with us today the CEO of Gulf Oil Lubricants, Mr. Ravi Chavla, and the CFO, Mr. Manish Gangwar. I will now hand over the call to Mr. Chavla for his opening remarks, which shall be followed by a question and answer session. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Nitin. Uh, good afternoon, good evening, and good day to all of you. I hope all of you are uh, well. Uh, welcome to the quarter three call. Uh, let me start by sharing with you that uh, for us as Team Gulf, it has been quite heartening for us to deliver the highest ever quarterly volumes of 600 crores for the first time. And of course, this has been achieved uh, when the environment did have a lot of challenges in quarter three. But uh, we are happy to sit, uh, share that uh, this growth has given us a market-leading growth. And we have seen that quarter three has been similar to quarter two in terms of profits. But the volumes were higher at uh, 36,000 KL in quarter three. And that's a 9% growth, which clearly shows the uh, market share gains for us when the market has been flat to minus 5, minus 6% in various sectors. And definitely, we have seen some challenges in the demand conditions while they improved for the B2B OEM segments and the B2C segments, some of them. We've seen that uh, in the rural side, uh, motorcycle oils and the agri lubricants, there was uh, subdued demand there than what we expected. But certainly we have seen the market share gains for Gulf, which has gained. And uh, the reasons that we have seen is that also because some of the initiatives that we put in place helped us to reach these growths, some of the new customer acquisitions, OEM, for example, the franchisee workshop did very well. Uh, industrial infrastructure did very well. Uh, we have seen very good growth in diesel engine oils and passenger cars, but uh, motorcycle and agriculture are the two areas which we are hoping for growth. Overall, with the uh, mix we had, which is normally 60-40 for our uh, B2C, B2B, that came down in quarter three to 55-45, but the numbers for B2C have remained the same as the previous quarter. Manish will highlight that. And uh, what really affected the... Uh, uh, realization and of course the uh, profitability was the segment mix as some bazaar sales saw a lower offtake as explained in the rural economy. So that was the reason for that. And also of course the input costs, uh, that, uh, they have studied, we have taken all the prices up. So that's been very heartening for us. And uh, we could also share with you that YTD nine months, uh, the volume growth is at 21%, revenue growth at 37%. And uh, PAC has also grown in spite of the uh, you know, unprecedented rising input cost scenario. And these have been the heartening things for the uh, quarter. And uh, as, we, as we look at the markets, we are seeing that you know, things are picking up even the two sectors I mentioned. And uh, I think for us also, we have seen that uh, with the price situation being stable, uh, we look forward to the stable prices uh, helping us to go to our margin levels, provided the mix comes what we want. So all in all, a very uh, heartening quarter uh, with the challenges. So we continued our brand investments. We continued to, to look at, you know, how because our, the sales team also could go out to the market and do a lot of activations. Uh, in December, we had a display contest for our motorcycle oil, which really made December do very well. So number of initiatives on the ground, which have helped us to deliver these highest revenues and also good profits this quarter. I'll hand over now to Manish to take us through some of the other things and uh, some of the other events in the company. Manish. Thanks, Ravi. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, as Ravi mentioned, the quarter uh, saw for the first time 600 crore top line to be crossed, which was uh, which was the highlight for us. And uh, of course, we, are the, we have been able to deliver same pack as September quarter. Last year, September, uh, December quarter had a lot of pent up demand, and the B2C uh, sales volume was quite high. Uh, which, as Ravi mentioned, was uh, to, to some extent moderated in this quarter. So that pent-up demand and the mix uh, helped us deliver the 
you know, record quarter in last year, December. So from the base, of course, the uh, quarterly profit are looking 8% lower, but uh, on a QOQ basis, we have been stable in spite of um, some uh, challenges on the input cost side. Overall, uh, I think uh, working capital also, as we highlighted in the previous call, there was a pressure on the working capital because of the rising inflationary trend and uh, nearly, you know, a series of price increases taken which increased uh, realization. So this time, this again, we have been able to re realize our full price increases in this quarter, which you can see the per liter realization has gone up, uh, even on a QOQ basis. Overall, uh, we have, uh, we continue to remain net debt free. We carry more than 500 crore of cash on the balance sheet, which, uh, which also, and the kind of confidence the board has in the earnings visibility going forward over a sustainable period of time, the board was happy to consider and uh, reward the shareholders by way of announcing the buyback, which is at 26% uh, premium to the closing price. That, uh, that, has, that decision, uh, I think, has been uh, made in the overall interest of shareholders, which we hope your investors will appreciate. Uh, with these opening remarks, we would like to move to Q&A, and, and uh, over to you, Nitin. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the attached tone phone. Participants, to ask a question, please press star and one. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. First question is from the line of Rohit Kadam from Entrust Family Office. Please go ahead. One, uh, thanks for uh, the opportunity. Couple of questions. Uh, firstly, uh, if you could elaborate the thinking on the buyback here and if uh, promoters will be participating in this. And uh, do we also expect uh, more buybacks in the future? Because even after this, you will have a fair amount of uh, cash buildup on the books. Yeah, thanks for the question. I think the Buyback has been announced for all the shareholders. It is through tender route, which is considered the most transparent way of uh, returning cash to shareholders. And uh, yes, promoters have also shown the intention to participate in the buyback. Uh, whether we will, there will be future further buybacks or not, it is a board decision, of course. But our philosophy has been to return cash to shareholders. Uh, we have been paying uh, consistent dividends. Now buyback has been announced. We are also looking at various investment opportunities. Currently in, uh, you know, electric vehicle space, EV value chain, and allied activity, allied areas. So depending on the investment plans of the company and future growth, uh, all options will be considered by the board as and when appropriate. Thank you. Sure, that's very helpful. Uh, and the second question is, uh, can you comment on the market gains in what, uh, which segments are we seeing is the share gain? Uh, we've seen consistent share gains, I think, over the last few years, but which, uh, which would be the two or three major segments where we are gaining market share? Is it two-wheelers, four-wheelers, or, or TV oil? Yeah, so, uh, you know, overall, the market is, we would say, minus five, minus six percent, also due to COVID, the retail markets have been closed. So in terms of our growth, uh, what we are seeing across segments, certainly our uh, passenger car motor oils are growing very well. So there, there is a gain happening. Diesel engine oils, we have been leading in some segments and the growth is, is coming well. Industrial B2B segments, infrastructure, these are the other pockets which are there. And, and the OEM franchisee workshop, where we have a sizable presence with a lot of OEMs, our growths are certainly ahead of what we see in the industry. Also, you, I would say the organized sector, which did very well, when COVID came first in 2020, even in 2021, we would say organized sector products which have come in uh, OEM side also in terms of the higher grades that have launched, uh, you know, that has helped. So market share, I would say in most of these segments, motorcycle is one segment where the consumption has come down, especially rural. So there I would say it's, it's, a, it's a quite an intense competitive area. And agriculture demand itself came down in 21 and what we see now also in the seasons. So there again, I would say a flattish sort of thing, but 
if you look at the uh, OEMs we have even on the agriculture side, they have done well in some months. So all around growth for us and market share gain. Uh, most of it, you know, end of year, we would know where we are, end of March. But I would say uh, good, uh, good market share gains because if you have grown around 20%, when the market is at flat to minus 5%, the gain is certainly there across segments. Uh, so, so, uh, so allow me to slip in one more on cumulative hikes this year, which you take. Sorry, sorry, we couldn't hear you. Uh, what would be the cumulative price hike you all have taken over the last three or four quarters? So there have been series of price increases in various segments. Uh, in retail segment, we have taken at least four price increases over the last eight nine months. And in B two B, it is a bit you know negotiation process, so it happens. In OEM uh, business, mostly it is formula driven. Quarterly or half yearly formulas are there. So with every quarter uh, or half year, the price increase uh, happens based on global base oil indices. But uh, across sectors, the price increases have happened. Yes, sir. If you say eight to nine months, there are three to four increases. Uh, understood. I would presume totally this would be amounting to close to high teens on a by basis. Yes, it is. yes. You know, it has covered the more all the all the costs are covered, but currently the mix is kind of you know a few of the mix has not happened the way it, it uh, depends on the market demand. Otherwise, most of the cost increases are now uh, into the price, of course, and uh, you know we'll have to wait and watch what happens next. Understood, understood. Thank you so much. All the best. Thanks, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Yes Singhi, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. I'm audible. Yes, yes. Yeah, just a couple of questions. Uh, firstly, what was the reason for a substantial increase in other expenses? And uh, like, if you could please throw some light on uh, advertisement and below the line promotional activities during the quarter. Other expenses include, of course, uh, as you mentioned, a and uh, advertisement and promotion. That has also gone up uh, because now that markets have started opening, the activities were there, ATL, BTL has been done. So, And, of course, the freight rates have gone up with the, with the kind of uh, increases in the diesel prices. Uh, so some of the freight increases also have come in. So, And, of course, one more important is that royalties to OEM. So as and when the OEM share goes up, OEM component goes up, the OEM royalties go up and hence uh, that also is a part of the other expense. So there is a lot of servicing happening in the OEM workshops where we have tie-up. So as you see the older vehicles and of course vehicles servicing is, is more there. So that is also where the it is a good sale and of course uh, that is also helped uh, overall for us also. But the royalties payment goes up there as the volumes work. Okay, and uh, so what is the split between OEM and third-party service centers currently? Overall, overall, uh, we our franchisee workshop services are in the part of B2C, which Ravi mentioned this quarter was 55 uh, versus B2B 45 percent. Okay. Okay, and uh, would you see any impact of chip shortages in the coming quarter? So you see, chip shortages impact OEMs uh, to manufacturing. Our factory fill component of the total business is less than five percent, or around five percent today out of the, and we are ninety-five percent replacement market. So directly, it doesn't impact us uh, because uh, our uh, factory fill business is only five percent of the total volume. Okay, got it. Thank you. That's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mohit Kumra from Kumra Investment Company. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. Uh, my uh, question is regarding, uh, in a way, it is a follow-up of the first question which was given. So ever since you were listed in 2014, you have done excellently, obviously, anybody can see. But your return on equity is falling consistently it started off at like 40 now even after this buyback plus if we assume that you continue your dividend 35 percent whatever we are still in the very early 20s so does your management or your promoters have a range or a line in the sand regarding return on equity but can your investors expect you to maintain a 
respectable 20 to 25 percent is that in your mind and another part of the same question is that organically speaking do you have any investment organically speaking in the next two years three years five years to in increase capacity or something is that in your mind thank you so on the first part you see uh, as a growing company uh, when you when you are uh, you know investment goes up in working capital our top line has delivered a consistently you know out performance to the market your uh, your deployment in working capital etc is needed in line with the top line growth and that's where you will see the growing companies uh, you know the percentage still uh, of roe roc slightly you know keeps uh, coming down to some extent of course uh, it is uh, it is still in a you know high teens or about uh, about that which is a decent one but um, the effect of buybacks etc is also to increase that as a, uh, the return ratios to improve over a longer period of time of course uh, the earnings as the earnings uh, go up also it will also be a because last two years if you see our profits have been because of covid impact the markets have been shut down every year to at least two months and that has kept our profit uh, impact uh, profit also in a band which uh, which will uh, when the market improves and uh, we deliver uh, improvement in profit the ratios will further improve uh, sorry i missed your second question the second question was sort of a continuation ki you have like 500 crores with you right now do you okay yeah i got it um, the they, organic they investments have, are they required understood so we have 140000 kl capacity in both our plants and uh, that can be ramped up these are on two shift basis so we have enough blending capacity we may have to do some uh, sort of i would say balancing equipment some filling lines etc um, to meet the increased uh, you know space requirement some civil work etc but annually we do not see more than 15 crore rupees of uh, capex in our current business uh, for the next 3 uh, 4 years okay can i also just uh, hook on to one of the points you were speaking about working capital so your inventory is grow while uh, excellent performance by the company you are growing very well but your inventory is growing at a much faster rate uh, now this is because of higher absolute levels or your inventory is growing at a much faster rate than your sales or profits or whatever while you are referring to the september figure of inventory not specifically ha huh? matlab over the, over the years over the last 5 years let's say yeah so you see one of the reason is that we started our second plant in chennai 3 3 years ago 3 3 and 1/2 years ago so with the second plant you have to keep every grade of base oil there you keep some infinite goods inventories there to cater to the market so that led to an increase uh, in that year which uh, which then stabilized and in the last 9 months i would say supply chain disturbances across and uh, base oil for india as a whole is mostly an imported uh, you know a large part of it is imported and uh, you know to mitigate the risk of uh, losing on inventories or in terms of stock availability i think uh, every player has stocked up more of base oil and other uh, raw materials to meet up the supply chain disturbances the shipment times have in elongated overall uh, there are uh, there are challenges on the you know additive supplies so to mitigate that uh, i think um, everybody has increased the inventory for a short term till the time global supply chain scenario improves uh, thank you so much uh, am i allowed to ask another question uh, if that is continue so maybe request you to come back in no no, no problem no problem i am thank you thank you The next question is from the line of Sabri Hazarika from MK Global. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. Uh, so uh, I just have one question. Uh, this relates to your uh, EV investment. So the first investment, uh, Indra, it was that that company was into home back home charging. Is that right? Uh, yeah, it is. It is a car charging uh, thing, mainly catering to the home charging. But home charging. of course, it can be because this is a slow charging uh, uh, slow charger. So ideally, suited for home or destination charging. 
Okay, and this second, uh, the recent one is basically into uh, software solutions, right? So charging only, is that right? Yes. Okay, so so how are you like? Uh, I mean, uh, uh, how are you like looking into this whole thing? It seems like that you are like acquiring companies to build some sort of an ecosystem. So can you give us some idea how how you are planning to take this ahead, and how much uh, involved Gulf Oil Lubricants India would be in the entire thing uh, going ahead? Yeah, thanks, Abhi. Basically, you see, we are we are looking at uh, participating in the EV value chain, as we mentioned. We have been mentioning uh, to all of you that um, over a longer period of time, we believe that we should be in that sector somewhere in some way in across the value chain. And uh, we have, you know, the strength of our brand. We have the strength of our OEM tie-up and our distribution reach, which we would like to definitely leverage in the EV ecosystem. And hence, we are picking up uh, things which can be, you know, which can be integrated. For example, the recent uh, yesterday's acquisition uh, into a SaaS platform will help us, uh, you know, localizing the Indra chargers platforms uh, or chargers in a way where we can, um, you know, if integrated properly, it can be because the software requirements and uh, things will be different, different for different, different countries. So that is one reason that, and of course, we want to overall leverage our distribution strength, etc. So that is why we are building up that ecosystem, as you rightly said, by picking up the niche companies in those sectors where which can help us uh, on a longer term basis. Okay. Okay. So, so I just uh, thanks. Uh, another question uh, I had. So, uh, so I just add that uh, you you mentioned that uh, uh, your uh, B2C share actually from Q3 FY21 to Q3 FY22 has actually fallen. Uh, it has fallen to around 65%. I think in Q3 FY21 it was around 65%. So that basically points that uh, your yeah, B2C volumes have actually seen a uh, uh, YOI decline. But I think uh, last year there was a major growth also during Q3 FY21. So, so is that the right assessment that last year it may have grown by close to like 20-25 percent, and because of the pent up demand, it has actually fallen by around 7-8 percent? Is that the right assessment because of the reversal of this pent up demand and going ahead again will be like back to the normal growth? Yeah, so you see there was a pent up demand in last year uh, December quarter. And uh, that helped us to deliver record uh, performance there in terms of profitability. As you know, retail, if there is a good share of retail in the overall mix, it, in, it uh, boosts the profitability. And uh, the percentage of 65 coming down to 55 is, but overall we have not degrown in that sector per se in terms of number because the volume has gone up. As a percentage, it is looking lower, but we have been sort of flattish, I would say, flattish to marginal growth is still in B2C. Is that only because the overall volumes have gone up, the percentage have shown, and then accordingly the ratios of if you compare the per liter EBITDA, etc., then that shows a sort of slight decline. But overall, we have there is no degrowth per se in any of the sector segments. Oh, okay, sir. Okay, fair enough. Uh, I'll get back uh, for more questions. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ankit Mahajan, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, hello, hi. Uh, so, can you please uh, help us with the volume leaks across segments like TV, two wheeler, uh, and car, etc. And uh, and also the mix remains same in value term. So, as we mentioned, uh, our our B two B volumes were slightly better this quarter. Overall mix is roughly 20% uh, is uh, personal mobility, around 34% uh, uh, diesel engine oil. Industrial segments have, have gone up to 18%, which usually is around 15%, and others are a similar range of around 28%. Okay, okay. Uh, and my second question is on retail lubricant. Uh, what were the reasons for weakness in this segment uh, during the quarter? Sorry? Retail, you are saying? Retail segment? Yeah, yeah. Retail and lubricant. What, what is, I didn't get your question. Sorry. Can you repeat it? 
yeah, uh, means uh, the reasons for weakness in that segment. As we mentioned, you see the rural in this quarter, the rural uh, economy uh, and also agriculture demand of lubricants came down because last last year agriculture demand really peaked. As you can see in the tractor sales also, they started getting negative new tractor. So agri was lower and in the rural we saw even motorcycle, there was obviously some dip. I think these two are the factors where probably retail ratio didn't come through. But still as Manish mentioned, they have, they have still maintained their volume and others have grown far ahead of them. Diesel engine oils, cars you know, gear oils, the other other products have grown. So so basically, it is, it is uh, you know, obviously demand there was uh, even less than what we expected, but still good. Okay, got it. Uh, uh, thank you thank so you. much and uh, all the news. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Hemal, an individual investor. Please go ahead. So thank you for the taking my question. Uh, what would be the battery uh, revenue for this quarter? So give us a moment, we will uh, get back to you. Okay. Of course, uh, as we have highlighted in our press release, this quarter, uh, the battery performance because of the supply chain um, imbalances or uh, challenge coming from, uh, you know, because we do imported batteries, right? We, so far, the localization we have not done and imports were quite disturbed this quarter. So the best performance of battery uh, was lower this quarter. Around 13 crore rupees is the top line for the quarter from battery. Are we still uh, given? Given? Are we still going to focus on this uh, battery business going forward in the way that we had uh, envis envisioned uh, a year yes. and a half, two years back? Yes. yes. So still, still, Very still much. seeing it as a growth cross sell area. Yes. Yes. We believe that it is. A, it can give us a, a good share in, mar in the marketplace, and it has a synergy with our distribution with, uh, and brand, which has been the primary objective of going into this. We are now taking very, because of the supply chain disturbances we have faced over the last eight, nine months in this segment. Now we have uh, speeded up our localization effort and uh, we will be taking aggressive stand on localizing the manufacturing. Okay, so my next question sir, was on uh, this January, February that we are in, just on a ballpark, are you seeing improvement in your B2C channels or is it still very... Uh... Uh, is it still very uh, similar to what you observed in this quarter? We will not be able to comment on an ongoing quarter, please. No, just like not not specific data. Just uh, is it a de demand issue has been still existing? Is that what I'm asking? Like, is it a is it a issue overall ongoing or is it recovering now? Just any highlight you can throw on it on a high level. This is a season. This is a season for the lubricant. Uh, so it is. It is something, uh, and agri season also should start. So we are hoping for a good agri season also to come back because uh, last quarter the agri was not doing well. Okay. So I'm going to go back to the same point. Uh, uh, somebody raised earlier about this inventory data. I understood your answer, but I just want to think about: Is there an optimal inventory level that? you would want to manage to like number of days uh, and and what I understood this uh, during COVID the issues that came about but uh, let's assume we take it out two three quarters down the line and COVID is on a back burner where do we imagine this inventory days to settle at like is there a number in mind and strategically like where do we because I'm seeing some of your competitors doing uh, still facing the same issues, slightly gone higher, but uh, having far, far better inventory days and still managing the business. So I'm just throwing it out there that it may have risen during last three, four quarters, but it is more of a bigger issue, which is coming out from several years. And I understand the factory starting, but still the inventory management has been just rising, just growing in one direction. So is there an optimal number that we have thought through where we should reach in the next two, three quarters? You see, our gross total has been in the range of, uh, when the times were stable, in the range of around 90 days. 90 to 95 days. That has been our range. Currently, it is at around uh, 117, 115 days. Um, I'm talking gross working capital. And uh, of course, last uh, September quarter, it had gone even uh, around 120 days. 
So now we are at around 115. Already there is a five-day reduction in uh, the last quarter. And we hope to stabilize in a normal time back to 90 days uh, around that gross working capital days. Okay. C can I ask my one last question? Is that possible? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, uh, so, uh, in in the in the sense of uh, the dividend policy that we have been having in capital allocation, is that is that going to continue ongoing? Is that uh, or is that also now because of the share buyback, maybe question or uh, should we assume that its dividend policy stays as it is? Because I think the payout ratio has been gradually being increasing over the years. So is that is that going to continue? At this stage, uh, we would we can only say that uh, there are multiple ways of returning cash to shareholders, and all the ways are open to return cash to the shareholders, and the subject to, of course, the investment opportunities in the existing and new line of uh, emerging opportunities in the EV space, etc. Okay. Thank you, sir. I'll, I'll get back into the queue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Deva Prati Banerjee, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello. Yes. Yeah. Congratulations to the management for a good set of results. Uh, sir, I have two questions. Uh, first on the A&P spend. Uh, so can you give some uh, number on the A&P spend for this quarter? As I mentioned, it has uh, slightly increased. So it is around 3% of the top line, which is an increased top line. Oh, sure. Uh, my second question is on your battery segment. So, uh, I mean, any any range, uh, any margin range that you can share on your battery segment? You see, battery for us currently is a very small segment. We are nurturing this, we are growing this, and a lot of uh, resources are being put behind this. So, the current margins will not be a fair indication of what we are trying to aim and uh, gain out of this uh, segment. So... Once we reach a size and scale, it will be an appropriate question at that point in time. Sure. Thanks. Uh, one last question, if I can slip in. So can you just give some uh, high-level numbers in terms of your volume and value share uh, in terms of the lubricants market? Sorry. What, uh, yeah. Uh, in terms of our market share, you see, we are playing in the yeah. uh, auto automotive and industrial. We are uh, quite well placed in the bazaar market where we have close to 8-9% share in the diesel engine oil and motorcycle. The others are share is around 5-6% to of the bazaar. Industrial, we are slightly lower at about 4% uh, of the uh, industrial market. So this would broadly give you the shares that we have. And OEMs, of course, we are with the OEMs that we are there, right from commercial vehicles to, uh, car, to cars, bikes. Uh, depending on the OEM, of course, the share differs based on whether we are, uh, you know, second supplier or three out of three suppliers. So I think all in all, if you take our share, you could take it as higher in the bazaar market in some segments and overall at a 5-6% level. Thank you so much. And all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Manoj Obro, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. So I've got uh, two questions for you. Uh, could you please uh, help me with the utilization of the Chennai plant? The Chennai plant utilization currently is at around 60% level. Okay. And sir, could you please help me with the CapEx guidance for 22 and 23? Uh, I, I answered this in one of the earlier questions. The regular CapEx will be in the range of around 15 to 20 crore rupees. Oh, that's good. Sorry for that. I may have missed earlier, sir. Okay. Actually, the second question is uh, that uh, uh, about our recent acquisition of the electric fee, I know a lot of thought process must have gone into, but just wanted to hear from you. What has been the strategic thinking behind the move, sir? So I again answered this in the previous question that uh, we are looking at participating in the entire value, value, EV value chain and uh, a SaaS platform is integral to you know some of the ecosystem and in creating charging infrastructure, battery swapping. Electrify already has a software on, on in these segments with the IoT enabled uh, platform, which uh, which is uh, helping in the charging and battery swapping infrastructure in India. As you must have seen our press release also, around 40% of all EV car owners today in India 
use some form of electrify platform service in one way or the other and hence we as i mentioned uh, we want to leverage our strength of brand distribution reach and oem relationships and the saas platform by electrify can be a very useful tool to scale up and provide ecosystem for uh, even servicing the oems also which we are already connected in the lubricant space and as and when or some of the new ev oems also so all this uh, thought process is there in uh, you know instead making a strategic investment in electric uh, electrify yeah to add we have also invested in indra renewables for the car chargers so there is a connectivity there also for the software to player got it sir thank you so much sir and uh, best wishes for the next quarter sir thank you thank you so much thank you sir thank you the next question is from the line of mohit kumra from kumra investment company please go ahead yeah uh, thank you for taking my question uh, again uh, i wanted to understand something on a longer arc like a, a sort of you uh, i know you can't give me an exact answer to this but how much of your business is actually exposed to electrical vehicles because the way the market is treating you and your competitors is like your business are going to fail in 5 years or 7 years but how much after uh, industry and commercial diesel what is actually exposed to electrical vehicles your total portfolio yeah so you know we want to just assure you and all the people on the call and that uh, given the growth of the indian economy uh, india being the third largest lubricant market and you can check the reports of experts like klein and others there is there is going to be uh, as a growth continued growth of 2 to 3% in the lubricant market for the next 15 to 20 years and uh, because the penetration of vehicles is low so there will be of course ev coming in in various sectors as we know uh, there is a lot of uh, you know momentum there we can see that but obviously on the ground the numbers are also there to see there are challenges so we have uh, we have hello hello Uh, so just let me check a moment we have the line for the management reconnected uh, mohit you may want to repeat your question yeah, yeah mohit no, I, I, i remember the question mohit i remember the question i'll i can i continue answering yeah please please do please yeah so you know the the lubricant demand is going to continue to be there in the positive territory for next 15 to 20 years so that that is not an issue because we are seeing penetration is required for all all the segments including industrial and the diesel engine oil the car bus uh, for us the sectors which obviously we have business is the two wheeler segment we are not much in the three wheeler segment oil doesn't go there and 95% of our sale is replacement lubricants so the new vehicles is only 5% of our sale the factory sales so that will get impacted if the new vehicles come and if if there is a if there is also we are into ev fluids so we have launched a range of hybrid and fully electric ev fluids globally in india so we'll have a role to play there coolants will have a role to play as electric technology ev technology comes so i would say the segments which probably have we have to look at is the two wheeler segment in buses also we don't supply much lubricants which are converting and three wheelers we have of course a tie up with piaggio but not not uh, a lot of volume there so i would say the vulnerable segments are going to be two wheeler and that will take time because the vehicle park there will continue to grow even if the ev penet in terms of the ic uh, motorcycles of course there will be some uh, you know dip in that uh, as it goes along but it will take another 10 to 15 years for that vehicle park to come to a level where it will impact the volumes so i think we are of course looking at the ev value chain uh, where we can use our brand distribution and uh, oem tie ups so i think side by side we'll have to look at that and uh, continue to grow our market share in these segments as the demand is still there so you know there is a there is obviously mitigation and 
EV will come in two wheelers, in three wheelers, in in cars. We don't have much of a market share. Our market share is uh, you know four percent. So there again, we are growing our market share. But cars uh, again, the high-end cars probably you'll see some you know EV penetration coming in. So that's the way we look at it. And of course, we need to take actions also to look at future uh, growth opportunities here. So I would but just like uh, to add, you know, overall 40% of the market, 40-45% of market is diesel engine oil, which is medium to heavy commercial vehicle tractors. and tractors. And that segment, uh, say, uh, segment will take, uh, uh, is not going to be EV very soon, right? And so then there is an industrial segment which is roughly around 20-25% of the market and growing rapidly, considering the manufacturing push given by the government now in the last two years, three years. The manufacturing side of uh, industrial lubricant side will be a significant beneficiary of the entire thing and lubrication will, the requirement will significantly increase there. Then there are certain things, uh, certain uh, oils which keep going into even in electric vehicles. So the personal mobility segment is overall around 20% of the market within which motorcycle is a large part and the scooter within motorcycle is only 30% of the overall two wheelers where we are seeing mostly the models being launched right now. I'm there sorry, when a, you say, uh, I'm, I'm very sorry to cut you, but when you say the market, the market means your market, right? Uh, Gulf oil's market. No, no, I'm, we are talking about the industry. No, 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 overall, overall market. Industry, yes. But uh, could you give me some color on your, like what part of your sales are commercial, what is industrial, what is passenger? Is, is that a, can you just give me an overall figure? Like? So that we have given in the, in our all uh, earlier calls also. We have almost similar market share to industry in diesel engine oil and close to similar market share overall in personal mobility within which we have slightly more in two-wheeler and less in personal uh, car. Or industrial, we are uh, below the market uh, overall market share where we are our focus is and last two, three years we have grown high double digit there in terms of our growth in industrial segment and others uh, remain similar to the market overall. So overall... Uh, we see that 15-20% of the market over a longer period of time may have some impact or plateauing in the lubricant requirement, not the entire market, which is the perception currently that uh, in the lubricant industry will be finished in 5-7 years. That's not going to be the case. Even as per experts also, the growth of or the peak of industry, uh, lubri overall lubricant cushion somewhere may be in the you know 2030-2040 to period. Thank you so much for your time. Thank, Thank you. you. The next Thank question you. is from the line of Hamel, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi, sir. Thank you for question, taking the question again. Uh, I forgot to ask, uh, do you believe the base, like with crude oil rising, do the base oil prices have, they have stabilized for this quarter or there is a potential for further raw material hikes this quarter or the in the next couple of months? You see, we have highlighted again uh, in the last call also that base oil preempted the crude increase. The crude was stable for uh, you know early part of the year, but base oil had significantly risen because of the demand supply situation. Now, crude has started going up, but uh, base oil is already at an eleva elevated level, except few grades which are which are, you know, there are different, uh, you know, market trends for different grades of base oil. There are seven, eight grades of base oil. Each one follows their own demand supply pattern. But overall, we do not see a very significant increase in base oil because of this la recent uh, crude rally, because they are already at a very, very high level as compared to their, uh, you know, what they were in the last year middle or June, July, July, August or last year or was the peak. Before that, you know, quarter one, they were at their lowest point. So they are still at a much elevated level to those levels. So do you believe there is an opportunity for it to fall then further in the, given this different grade and supply demand and different level of refineries being worked upon and opening up in the world uh, this year? Do you believe there is an opportunity for the base oil to actually fall in the second half of this year, calendar year? See, it's a very difficult question to predict uh, as of today because there are, as I mentioned, multiple grades of base oil following multi demand supply situations in various parts of the world. Base oil is a global commodity 
and trade happens uh, you know consignments go from southeast asia to europe us and coming from us also uh, so this is a very very global commodity depends on lot of factors but typically if the crude is stable in a range the base oil should show a downward trajectory somewhere down the line if uh, crude is uh, you know stable in a range because uh, the base oil have already risen to a very very significant level okay and my, my absolute final question is uh, look it just seems like there has always been a spectacular very nice performance from gulf oil in terms of growth right in terms of volume and revenue but somehow just listening to the call today it seems that uh, you know where your growth is going towards infra or you know a lot of those areas in p2c where where you are seeing some stickiness or some issues is it it could be that we may see these a bit a bit the margin pressures going forward i mean are we doing growth with a focus on ebitda margin levels so that they come to the levels that we thought of 15 to 17 uh, sooner or is it that we will pursue growth even though you know ebitda margins may you know still stay at this level because i'm sure all of these products and all of these sectors have different products different margins and uh, you know uh, so we are hearing some competitors some want to do growth with a bit the margin performance to be kept uh, and some depending on the strategy up pursuing the path that you are so uh, how if you can just help us understand that much for the next you know couple of quarters of the fight you see yeah, you see some couple of years back or you could say 3 4 years back our band of margin was lower now we see the margin we talk of 14 to 16 you have said 15 to 17 so the endeavor is always to take the margin also up of course you have challenges in the market which have happened due to input costs and other such things as demand because of covid so our progressively is to increase our market share and keep the band also at a level and try to grow the band so that's really been our endeavor but since we operate in many segments including b2b b2c oem industrial we will obviously take a call to improve those in terms of our market share and keep the band at a healthy level so there is no thinking from the management to lower the band level we want to go towards the band level which we have defined and probably there are opportunities when the prices go up you know and the prices come down we have seen in the industry the margin is gained in that and as we improve our mix in the bazaar market and market where we are a clear number 2 today we believe that we can uh, definitely maintain the band and try to improve on the band as well as grow the business both of course the mix the mix of b2b we are not going to say no to because b2b is also a longer it's as you see the business we have a lower market share there so there is potential to grow in all the segments where we are focusing and i would just like to add for the benefit of it's an excellent question actually and uh, if you see we have been able to this series of price increases which we have taken you have seen our realization going up which has helped us recover the cost per liter basis which means the top line has gone up but the margins have remained per liter basis similar or slightly uh, you know at the same level and that is showing the percentage as a lower one if we just translate same on a like to like basis on last year december quarter we are already in that band of band of 14 to 16% you know if you just translate that ignoring the price increase impact which is just increasing the top line right now so we have already recouped our you know we are in that range of 14 to 16 if you just compare like to like on a realization basis got it thank thank you i appreciate it thank you thank you thank you thank you as there are no further questions i now hand the conference over to the management for their closing comments yeah uh, well i'd like to thank everybody on the call and of course we have tried our best to answer the questions anish and me uh, i'd like to end by saying that you know our focus is on you know the segment focused initiatives with with continuing as we have uh, shared all about the segments and uh, with help coming in from the stabilizing key input cost uh, it looks like it is a good platform to improve our performance going for, forward also with the covid situation uh, improving across the country and globally as people and governments are now deciding to take the same in its stride and move towards normalcy we hope to see the demand conditions going up and definitely uh, the gdp growing next year and uh, we believe that that will be a tailwind for us to re-energize our all-round growth and uh, definitely gulf team has been very passionate our business partners have been working hard for growth so that will be a good tailwind for us 
We are also driving up our internal focus to evaluate and participate in the evolving EV space, as we mentioned, and where Gulf can, uh, you know, make uh, make a move to have potential future growth segments. Uh, like we have grown the segments in the lubricant market, this is another added segment where we see we can add value. We are examining those. We have made a couple of moves globally and in India. The strengths of our brand distribution, reach, and OEM relationships will come into play as we look at this value chain, which is emerging. And if you take the Indian economy, we are obviously seeing a trend of economic activities, infrastructure, investments, uh, even mobility, automobile sector looking at positive growth across. And definitely, uh, you know, as you know, the loop business is generating a lot of cash for us, and that will continue as it is a generate cash generation business for us, and investments will come. You'll have to examine those. The demand conditions are picking up in the coming months in the next financial year, especially as you know, manufacturing, commercial vehicle production, construction equipment, even B2C, there is going to be a lot of money in the hands of consumers. And this augurs well for the entire industry, which I think will be back on the growth path, and which should provide the tailwinds for Gulf to push for further distribution reach, further customer acquisition, and further market share growth. So I'll sign off with that and wish all of you a uh, good evening and uh, all the best. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of your securities, that concludes this conference call for today. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines.